Michael got good at it. Yeah. Obviously, you know, like he knows, he just knows what he just knew what was going to work because he had every that ex- single time he had that experience. You know? Every single time when, when you when you think about like a Pharrell, he knows what's going to work regardless of what he's doing, what he's creating. A lot of these big pop artists already understand this because they have the experience to not only create but also create in a space where they understand how these audiences react rick rubin talking about the audience uh, the audience comes last as it relates to how records are you know put together and how he pr- approaches records caught me off guard i didn't i didn't think about it but i i think that i actually agree with him so let's listen to the audio and listen to him explain it and then we can kind of jump in and go from there and i believe that i'm not making it for them i'm making it for me and turns out that when you make something truly for yourself, you're doing the best thing you possibly can for the audience. Mm. So much of why, if you go to the movies, so many big movies just not good. It's because they're they're not being made by a person who cares about it. They're being made by people who are trying to make something that they think someone else is gonna like. And that's not how art works. Art doesn't, that's something else. It's not art, that's commerce. Mm -hmm. So if we're making art, we're making it's it's almost like it's almost like a diary entry so it can some could i be concerned that someone else might not like my diary entry it doesn't make sense you know it's, it has nothing to do with them my my diary entry has nothing to do with anyone else so everything we make as artists are essentially diary entries well thank you rick for your potent statement <laughs> <laughs> so alone i'm coming to you first because you are a creative You've put out projects, you put out projects where you really go into depth, thought, concepts, all the stuff that, you know, he kind of addressed. What do you think about him saying it's about the creative versus being about the audience? No, I, that, I 100% agree. Do you agree? It's not even like a conversation that I would like. Like if somebody says that it's not, I'd be like, all right, cool. That's not why I make stuff, you know? I think you I think you have to make stuff for yourself first and and the main reason why I'll just kind of get to it the main reason is because people want unique experiences in general mm-hmm. if they want to grow with something or somebody sure you can get by for a while on a persona mm-hmm. you can navigate that in a certain way Jay talked about it last week and the difference between an artist and a product yep um, and that's really what it comes down to. If you're like a true creative, a true artist, and your goal and in, in this creativity that you're creating is to genuinely create something that is different and new and powerful to the world or or breaking of the world or, you know, something to disrupt the world or, or to do something in that manner, to do that you that, that you don't pull that from a place of following. So let me a- let me ask you this follow up question. If someone is approaching making music strictly based off a crowd response or, you know, the reception that they may receive, is that 100% a bad thing or is it just a different approach from what you talked about? Just in your opinion. Now, I'm not saying I it's don't the think Bible any, and then I'm just saying. I don't saying. think anything is 100%. I don't think anything's fully black and white. Okay. I think you have to be conscious of what 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 we're doing here. So to to kind of make it, to make it make sense, if you, if you want to be an artist in today's day and time, you have to, and you want to make any type of commerce off of in this, in the culture of capitalism that we have, mm-hmm. then, then you have to, you have to understand what actually makes money to some degree. Right. So I think you have to do some sort of balance of it. If you want to be strictly independent and you want to try to make money off of it. Now, if you just want to make art to make art, then you can just make art to make art and that there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I think there's a, Depending on where you want to take it, there's a creativity involved in figuring out how to share and reach your people and your tribe in that aspect. And it's hard. It's super hard because that's not really like the intent. Right. You know what I mean? It's right. like I, I make stuff. My, my, my thing that I tell everybody is like I make stuff for myself and for people like me. That's it. Like if, if you're That's real. if you're not like me or you don't like the same things that I like or you're not into the same headspace that I'm at when I'm creating things, that is cool. This is uh, probably not going to be for you. Yeah, this is this is yeah. just me. This is what I'm making in this moment and I can't make something for you in your moment in time. That's for you to do and you to figure out or you to figure out what you want from somebody else. That's that's why or, the- or maybe what you're making may apply to someone. You never know how it can be received because it might it might actually apply to someone in their in their moment. 
and they might be but, able to relate to it. But it doesn't matter because I'm not, I'm making my moment. I can't make yeah. somebody else's moment. So like if my moment works for somebody else, that's cool. That's, that's the whole purpose. That's the reason why we share stuff. That's why we do this podcast. We can sit on this podcast and talk to ourselves all the day, all time and whatever, or we can get on the podcast and talk about stuff and reach the people that enjoy the things that we talk about mm -hmm. it's it's the same way you know you, gotcha. we have to balance the commerce versus the or the you know the the practical side of how we do things that's why we're just not sitting in a dark room you know holding a microphone making microphone sounds you know what i mean that's why we're conscious about topics that's why we're conscious about the things we do so that we can reach try to reach the people out there that want to consume the things that we put out there. So you can't just go at it. If you want to actually reach people, you can't just go at it from a strictly creative standpoint, unless you have a team that can do that for you. So, so I agree with R what Rick's saying, but Rick, Rick has a lot of like his wisdom's like it's introspective, but it's like obvious stuff. A lot of yeah. times it's like, Oh, Rick is saying something like monumental. No, he's just saying stuff that Sound. a lot of us say, but he's just saying out loud and he's Rick Rubin. So. And it, right. it sounds, it sounds extra deep when it comes from him. But I mean, it is, it, I mean, it is deep. It. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay <laughs> I mean, it's okay. not, it's not that it's not deep or anything like that. It's just, he, I don't think he's this like, man, nobody thinks like Rick Rubin. No, I think exactly like Rick Rubin. Yeah. I just don't sit Indian style and grow my hair. Maybe I'll grow my beard out longer than yeah, it don't hit people. The, it doesn't hit the same because no, you're know. not Rick Rubin. Then people will make fun of my beard. So you don't have a, like a van with, with seats and I don't, yeah. I don't have a bus in my yard. You don't have a, that's a studio. You don't have a harp. If you, you had a harp friends with yeah. Andre 3000 who come over your house and play the flute for yeah. you. Yeah. If you got a harp and a bus Rubin, and stuff so. like that. That might, change it a little bit but it's all yeah it's it's just it's what it is this is what it is this is you know what you think jay based off what you heard from rick rubin i understand where he's coming from but you know what there are people who we all enjoy who they are thinking about the audience when they make art i i will you know what i'll talk about just you know because i'm from that 80s era what made michael jackson so great especially on his run when you're talking about between off the wall, going into Thriller, going into Bad, going into, you know, his 90s bag with Teddy Riley, is he cared a great deal about what his audience thought, okay? And that's, that's how he point. went into making that's a good point. records. Now when we talk about Prince, Prince didn't care what you thought. True. And that's what made them both so very great. True. Is because Michael Jackson wanted the people who had been rock. He cared so much about his fans. He wanted to give them what they liked. He was emotional about it. You know, yeah, and true. if and, and you, you see that, like there have been three documentaries. There's one about Bad. Then there's one about Off the Wall. And uh, I'm half, about I'm halfway wall. I'm halfway through the no, one thriller. about Thriller. You know, and I still gotta watch the whole that. concept about you what know is Thriller it on? is it's on uh, Paramount, okay. Paramount Plus. You know. All these streaming things are going to change very soon. Trust me. Um, Hope I know somebody. <laughs> and I'm just, uh, it, and, but does that make Michael Jackson's, because of his intent, does that make his art not as good as <clears throat> Prince who would make records, uh, you know, who'd, who'd be like, look, you can't even skip some of these records if you buy the CD because I right. made it as one long track. Right. Um, you know, when I think about a record like Alphabet Street, I was like, he did that because he wanted to do it. It worked. Because he was Prince and he had True. the cachet to do it, but there's absolutely re no reason why a song like that should have worked. Because it, it, you know, was it rock? Was it pop? Was it hip hop? You know, there's so much going on. You know, when he says "Thieves in the Temple," he's not thinking the Batman soundtrack. That was for commerce. Yeah, I will say good. that. That is <laughs> that the was, one. That was for commerce because you know, at one point, people don't even realize between '78 and '92, Prince put out an album every single year. He did you know? And I think the Batman yeah, the soundtrack, first, the one had. He, had him on the cover with the with his panties on. Yeah, then yeah. He had 1999. You know, I don't think he then was he thinking had, about uh, okay, this is how I'm rain. going to 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 I'm going to sell this to the masses. You know, like I really think he was. It was like I'm going to play every instrument. I'm going to write every song, and they're either going to like it or they don't. And, and the thing is, and, and that was his, during his genius period, where like we liked it a lot more than we didn't. But I say with Michael. Michael made you know because at one point during Thriller he wasn't happy with how it came out and like there were some changes that had to be made before it you know I don't think if Michael was had Prince's mentality he'd have done he'd have done The Girl Is Mine or if he'd done The Girl Is Mine right. he would not have put Paul McCartney on it you know like I, I really think he made do we love those records I don't like The Girl Is Mine I think I, I was like how are you going to do two songs and not keep Say Say Say, say but that's say, just say me was the one. but I, I, like I said I, I think there is 
<clears throat> sometimes people can go to it with a different mentality. And I think, you know, when we talk about who goes into it with, I'm going to do this for me. And if you come along with me, it's cool. Or I'm going to do this for the audience because I know this is what they'll appreciate. You know, I don't think, do I look down on either approach? No. Do I more, do I, does it resonate with me? The people who do things based on how they feel and hopefully the audience will come along with them, you know, once again, art versus product. I really, as much as I love Michael, and we all, you know, I feel like at a certain point, he came up through the Motown machine. He, he studied Barry Gordy. Yeah. He understood what it was to create a product that was also art. But Prince came along and he was like, I am an artist. At one point, that's what I'm going to call myself. <laughs> and then, and you're good. If you come along with me, cool. If you don't get thieves in the temple, it's on you. I want Terry to jump in because you, you, you were, I know you were, uh, you sound like you were going to say something. No, so it, sure it was just more along the line of uh, <clears throat> Michael Jackson was very polished and he knew what it took to make a project and who to use to make that project. Whereas Prince is more so the person that's making the project. Like he's playing the instruments. You know what I'm saying? He's arranging it, things of that nature. And Mike was doing that too. But Mike is more of an entertainer than he is a musician at the end of the day even though he is a musician, whereas Prince is the total opposite. You know what I'm saying? I think it's just about the int intent. You know, like like I said, Prince, like there's a reason why there are these gaps between Michael, especially there was a huge gap between Thriller and Bad. You know, like, you know, because he could have could put out an album that next year, but, you know, he's but still living on it. different back then. It, it was different, but, you know, like I said, it's cr like this crazy thing. Basically, Prince put out an album every year for 15 years. Like it doesn't even make sense. Yeah, jump in, my jump in my argument to that would be: I, I see where you're coming from. I see, I, uh, but my argument would be that you always start. Even Michael would start from a place of myself first. Mm -hmm. You can't get to the place where Michael's at unless you have mastered the other thing. And this is true. because, like, once you start factoring other people, there's no way. It just becomes. I don't want to say people pleasing becomes a way of trying to be scientific about how to how do I say this I don't even know how exactly to say this it's like when he made one album mm -hmm. that had a specific type of feel to it his next album may have a little bit may have a different type of feel to it so it may even though he may get a lot of overlap and a crossover he may lose some people within that and there's no way to compensate realistically for that from a creative standpoint right um because can't really gauge that you can't yeah. really gauge mm -hmm. people and it's, so it's really hard like michael jackson and prince are like these extreme examples yeah. obviously yeah but it, but but one thing that they both had going for them was the fact that they were both super successful and both super popular and, and they're both all, otherworldly talented as yeah. well for sure i think mike mike was but, more strategic in what he was doing though. But it's, I, it's almost like he found a pocket and and he just he exploited that pocket he knew what to do even though it wasn't the same thing all the time but he knew how to get to people and what what uh what they wanted to hear, so to speak. You know but but saying? he's but he's trying to trying to make it's like you say, he's trying to make specific songs. Like he's that's that's the intent. It's like the difference between trying like going that pop route. You know, like Michael Jackson was a type of artist that I regardless, after a while, like pretty much anything he put out was probably going to be super popular. You know, it didn't really matter what what it what it was. So, I don't know. I think I think you can. I don't think there's anything wrong with with. Like, to me, that that's just what I was saying when I was saying like you cater to. You have to balance it a little bit. You have to be able to balance like how you reach people, and that's just the most extreme example is Michael Jackson, and he's got all the resources to do all that, right? Right. He's literally the best example for that, so he can do that. And and I'm guessing, you know, everybody has that, and nowadays it's just. It's the same thing, except you know, we're talking about algorithms and we're talking about how we create content and we're talking about, you know, how, how we come across in the content, you know, mm. and all those other different things. So it's like it's the same thing as it's always been. But when you just take away the people completely and you can just create um, and then the people fall where they where they do, I, I think it's, we, st we still know. have artists that excel in that model. Mr. Morale, that is the epitome of album where it's like, this is what I'm feeling. We're going to put it out there and just live with the results. Like you got records in there. They snuck records in there that were supposed to be what you're talking about with the balance. But as a whole, that project to me was, this is where I'm at and I'm just going to put it out here 
Just deal with it. But just think about how much Kendrick had to do to get to that point. But but I also, would you say that? Would you say that? Was, yeah, I I think too. Though, though I think sometimes like I think that that the process is just intertwined. When I think about okay. albums that I made that were like super themed, mm-hmm. like when I did Love Redefined. Mm-hmm. When I was making that process, sure, I wasn't I wasn't like, oh, man, this one's going to work here or this one's going to do this. But what I was thinking in the back of my mind is like, it would be cool to introduce this type of sound to maybe reflect this particular style or part of me. Yeah. And maybe per- that particular part of me is something that is a little bit more upbeat. It is a little bit more of this over here. It is a little bit something that may work with these people over here, but it's not intentional in the sense of like, it's not like. I'm going to make this type of record. It's like, no, I'm going to utilize these tools to make something that might encapsulate. I know it's a very nuanced conversation. So you, you don't deviate from yourself. It's still authentic. It's just, it's, it's a different variation. It's a different version of you. Is that, is that? Yeah. I guess what I'm saying is like, I, I, I think they're a lot more connected Okay. than maybe the conversation can seem because like when I, when I sit down and make a record, Yes, I'm thinking it, the the overlying thing is I'm going to make everything that I want to make. Right. Right. But behind that, it's like moving in my head. It's like, cool. All right. Maybe I'll use something with a f- more up tempo or these type of instruments here because I want to kind of encapsulate this feeling over here. So I think the the process a lot of times get, just becomes very intertwined to where like it's it's kind of like one thing. It's not like it's the separate You know what I mean? Like a lot of times it it is just, it is just kind of combined. And I think once you get kind of get good at that, like Michael got good at it, obviously, you know, like he knows, he just knows what, he just knew what was going to work because he had that that experience. Every single time. When you, when you you think about like a Pharrell, he knows what's going to work regardless of what he's doing, what he's creating. A lot of these big pop artists already understand this because they have the experience to not only create but also create in a space where they understand how these audiences react so i i think i just think it's more of a you know don't get me wrong there is a, a specific thing out there where people just try to make records we just talked about kanye in this backstreet 100 you know what i mean that, 100%. that's a thing and i think to creatives a lot of times when we hear stuff like that it just comes across as forced and corny and it's just like all right cool if you like that that's what i, I get it but the end not for me you know I can dig it. I can dig it. That's my soapbox. There we go. Hey, (laughs) great comparison. Those are the extremes, but it drives the point home. 100% with Prince and Mike, because two totally different approaches to both of them are elite, all-time great artists. Mm -hmm. You know, know, there's a way for both to work. 